Hi there, welcome back. My name is Idel Mnemar and you're watching my search for me. I hope you had some nice time off and that you enjoyed the holidays and also that you had a really nice positive start of this new year. I took some time off myself, hence the silence in the last couple of weeks, but I really needed that. And now I'm back, I'm energized and uh, I'm really excited of about the coming months and everything that's going to be happening. Uh, one of the things that I'm personally working on is my online course where I will be talking about focus because um, that's something that I've been, um, you know, that has been a big challenge for myself in the last couple of years. But in the last couple of years, I also have um, found the right tools to really be more focused and achieve big things in my life so i want to share that with you so i'm really hard working on making sure that's uh, finalized in a couple of months and i can uh, share that with you so uh, yeah I, I will be posting and talking about that uh, in the coming weeks so also on the fan page and i'll also do a couple of videos and i will continue with the inspiring interviews um, this year I'm going to be interviewing more entrepreneurs, um, business owners, because I found myself those people are really inspiring and you can learn so, so much from them, from their mindset, from the tools that they use. So I want to share that with you as well. But for now, I'm going to be sharing the interview that I did last summer in London with my good friend Arvind. Um, I met Arvind a couple of years ago during a conference in London. We were sitting next to each other and he offered me some food. And yes, a little bit of a weakness, but that's how our friendship started. Um, and it's such a beautiful friendship because Arvind is such a beautiful soul. He's such a caring person and he really he's always there for you. He really tries to help and inspire people in his own way. He's also the author of a very great personal development book called Get the Life You Love and Live It. Um, furthermore, he's a uh, high achiever coach. Uh, he's been a coach for many, many years. And uh, yeah, really an, an inspiring person, an example um, to watch. So I've asked him, can I interview you? Because uh, he was one of the first persons that popped to mind when I was thinking of who am I going to be interviewing? And of course, Arvind, who like, yeah, that's the way he is, uh, very open. He immediately invited me to come to London to do the interview, helped me to find some other people that I could interview while I was there. And uh, yeah, it, it's been a really great journey and great friendship. So in this interview, we're going to be talking about several things. First of all, we're going to be talking about Arvind himself. Uh, some people don't know him, um, although he's uh, been able to reach quite a lot of number of people with his book, Get the Life You Love and Live It. Um, so we will be talking about that, but also about his journey, how he eventually became a coach and why for him this is so important. The message that he spreads about getting the life you love and living it, why that's so important. And he will also share some examples and, and some of the things that he's working on or has been doing. So a very inspiring interview that I highly recommend to watch till the end. Um, so I hope you enjoy and please do share it with others if you think they can benefit from um, the, the things that we discuss um, during the interview. And I also would love to hear from you. So uh, enjoy this first part of the interview. Okay, Arvind, thank you for taking your time today. It's such an honor to have you here. We've known each other for a couple of years. Four years almost. Yeah. Almost four years. And we're here today in your beautiful garden. It's such a beautiful day. And you've taken the time for this interview. So thank you so much. Thank you. And you're most welcome. And it's it's funny how these things happen. We, we met at a personal development event four years back. Yeah. We sat next to each other. And here we are. We've become really good friends. And finally, we get to do something together. So yes. welcome. And we couldn't have planned this better. Look at this day. Look at you. You, can, you, can, you can probably hear the birds and the bees in the 
in the background. Recording in the background. Yeah, yeah. that's nice. Mm-hmm. It's part of where so, we are. So very nice. So uh, when we get started, first of all, um, a lot of people don't know a lot about you. So let's just start with the basics. Who are you, and what do you do? Okay, so. I do a number of things, but I think the best way of saying it is that I help people transform their lives through, and I do that through my coaching, my writing, my speaking, events like this. Um, as you know, we've got a big event later on today. So it's all about making the world a better a better place in some way, either to one, working with someone one-to-one or bringing people together in an event like my annual picnic this afternoon and through my writing. Yeah, through writing. And about that later on. Um, but um, I mean, you help people transform their lives in a positive way, of course. But can you tell a little bit more about your own journey? How did it all start sure. with the, the feeling, the urge to want to help others? Sure. So it really began, I would say, about what, 14, 15 years ago now. I went through some major life changes and I ended up going to India for a couple of months. Um, Four or five weeks of that time was spent in an amazing charity school in South India, set up by a friend's mother. And that was actually life transforming, partly because I was going through so much stuff in my own life, but it also got me present to something much bigger than me. I worked with children from the age of three to ten for about four weeks. I was just being around them and I love I love their energy, I love their innocence, their their zest for life and and also had an amazing experience when, when I was working, when I visited an orphanage. And I was, there was four or five little orphans and I was just totally present. And I realized afterwards what it was, it was unconditional love. And it was the first time I feel that I ever experienced unconditional love, which was, I was totally in the moment, totally present. It was just like, it felt like it was a long time, but looking back, it's probably no more than a minute. And then I came out of it and I thought, wow, I want more of this. Yeah. And so I returned back to, to Europe and I spent another couple of years working in dot com companies because that was my prior background. My prior background was in IT yeah. and other things. So I came back and then that's when I discovered coaching until I came across the concept. I didn't even know such a thing existed. And then I realized that in a way I've been coaching people all my life. And there was something that always drew me to people and wanting to serve them in some way, wanting to make a difference in some way. Yeah. And then it became a profession. And then further along the line, I started writing, I wrote my first book, then the second one. And the second one, Get the Life You Love, has become a bestseller in the Amazon category. So it's helped a lot of people. I, I can only coach so many people at a time, one to one, but through my writing and through my books, I can reach a much wider audience. Yeah, that's absolutely beautiful. So uh, you actually find out that a passion within you that you probably had for a long mm. time. Uh, during that moment when you were in India, like to serve others sure. and, and coach and help them, you've actually been doing that for a long time, but you were not uh, yeah, aware. I wasn't of aware it. of it. And looking back, when I was a young boy in Africa, I, I was born in Kenya, okay. and even when we went to school, I always used to wonder why some of the African kids came to school without any shoes, hmm. and a lot of the times didn't have any stationery with them. And I just felt drawn to share some of my things with them. I never gave them my shoes, but I did give them a lot of my stationery and my parents used to wonder why I, I seemed to keep losing my stationery because they thought I was such a diligent kid otherwise anyway. Yeah. But I was giving it to the African children in my school, in my class. Yeah. yeah. And funny enough, it all came back to me because uh, I was quite a tiny, fragile, frail little kid and I was bullied a lot. And these African kids used to protect me because I was their friend. I was the guy who didn't look down on them. I was the guy who wanted to be with them and wanted to know more about them. I was only about, what, I would say 10 at the time. Yeah. And looking back, that's always been there with me. And, yeah. and then I wonder, I actually believe we all have the same qualities and the characteristics or the desire to help others, mm-hmm. but we somehow don't cultivate it enough or we're not aware of it. Yeah. And for me, I was lucky having had some major life changes. I was married at the time and got divorced. and. And we lost the dot com business we were in. We lost that as well. That just went went down very quickly after having done really well. Yeah. So there were some very significant life changes happening, yeah. and that caused me to look within and to become more aware of the bigger picture. Yeah, beautiful. 
funny how sometimes life throws things at you sure. you're not aware of, and then all of a sudden you have to choose another and, path. And what I find is that it always, always, always comes back to me in many different ways. Even this interview that happened because we sat next to each other and I shared some food with you, and that became that became a friendship. Yes. And here we are. Yes, indeed. that's how it all started. Mm. <laughs> um, so, can you tell us a little bit more? You talked very briefly about your coaching, about several books that you've written. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Make It Happen Club? Because yeah, that's basically Make It Happen Club is an idea I've had for a while. I'm actually in it now in terms of because I really feel that right now what the world needs, what we need, is people to come together in a practical way but also an inspirational way where they can all support each other, we can all grow with each other and have a great time as well. So Make It Happen Club, that's my Facebook page and I have the vision of creating an online and an offline club. It's really a community of people who think like me and who want to not only uh, have a great life themselves but make the world a better place at the same time. So I think that makes it more, much more worthwhile. So for example, uh, this afternoon, of this friends and friends, friends picnic in Regent's Park. Mm. You probably get a few hundred people come together and the idea is to have a lot of fun but also create a community and connect with each other. Yeah. Um, today I'm going to be seeing a baby that was born earlier this year and that's our, my, our first picnic baby. The couple we met at the picnic three years back, they started, they started dating and now they just had their first child. Right. So you just never know the seeds that we plant and what that could lead to. And that's really my vision is to do much more of those things. Um, connect people on a bigger scale. Yeah. And also serve them in some way because it's not just about connecting, it's about what's in it for them too. Yeah. And remind them of the bigger purpose. Like there's something bigger than us out there. And if somehow I can bring people together and bring that awareness to them and also allow them to have a great time because otherwise it's not much fun. What's the point? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. A little bit of both, I guess. Uh, and you're planning to do that through your Facebook page, through your website, what other ways that you mm. use? I, I want to be in lots more talks as well, I, I want to be speaking out yeah. there much more. My Facebook page is growing really well and I want to expand that a lot more. And what I'm finding is that social media is amazing for spreading a message. And if people can resonate with your message and people can get who you, who you are and what you stand for, they will follow you, they will share your message. And I feel today we've got such an amazing platform. Yeah. If you got a big vision in your life and you really go for it, you can make amazing things in the world. You can make uh, Steve, Steve Jobs said that if you're going to do something, they might as well, if you're going to make a dent in the universe, you might as well make a big dent. Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. So, what I say to people is that if you want to make a big dent in the universe, then come and talk to me. Let's make it happen together. Very and that nice. could be through coaching or through my writing or one-to-one -one interaction yeah. or I'm able to connect you with someone who can help you and more and so on. Yeah, and, and I assume, I mean, uh, that's something that you have to offer, but I assume that in the end you also hope that others will do that for others. Sure, exactly. Keep so on it's spreading it's, it's the message. Effect. Yeah. yeah. So again, coming back to the picnic we have you had for this afternoon, uh, my, my vision and my inspiration is that other people will also go out and do the same thing. Yeah. They'll meet like-minded people today and you never know what communities will form. You never know what seeds planted today between two or three people yeah. will lead to. Indeed. I mean hopefully there'll be more babies as well but that's, that's a side effect, that's a long-term <laughs> thing. That's also nice but uh, yeah just sharing and helping each other and connecting like you said. Yes, a friend, a friend who met someone at the picnic two years back, she ended, ended up Landing ended up getting her dream job in television, okay. all because she met someone there who referred her to someone else, and nice. so on. Uh, another friend who came, she didn't know much about meetups. She was single at the time. She came to the event a few years back. She heard about meetups, and she went along to one of these uh, meetup groups in London. Yeah. And she just got married to a guy she met there three okay. years back. So you never know. You know. I mean, I am going on a bit about a picnic, but that's, I'm using that as an example of what's possible. Yeah. Um, if people can come together in a fun, focused, purposeful manner, yeah. Then you never know what's, what that can lead to. Yeah, yeah. Probably also because it's a very open environment. Mm. It's uh, like-minded people exactly, who are yeah. open to um, having new connections, but also helping each other and listening sure. to each other. And I really, so you know, I also think that maybe I'm just so close to it. But I really do feel there's a huge awareness, huge movement for people to think of something beyond them, think yeah. about something bigger than them. Yeah. 
and I feel there's a surge in people wanting to make a difference in the world. And this is the thing, everyone I ever coached has always come back to what they want to do, what their legacy is going to be. So great, I coach them around relationships or simply find their life or getting the job they want. But ultimately it's about what's their deeper calling, what's, what, what, what do they really want to do in life. Yeah. And okay, what I find is that you can have all the toys in the world, you can have the best relationship in the world, you travel the world, but what's beyond that? Yeah. Like it all comes purpose. back to creating a legacy, leaving a mark. Yeah. And that's really my calling. My calling is to get more people connected to that deeper call, deeper purpose. Yeah. And once I've got them connected to that deeper purpose, they'll become unstoppable. They can go and do whatever they want. And anything is possible. It's beautiful. And I've known you for a couple of years and I know uh, that that's the way you are and you indeed like to help people and connect people sure. with others. So it's beautiful. This was the first part of the interview with Arvind. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed listening back to it, but also just doing the interview itself. Um, yeah, like I said, such an inspiring person. Um, and we talked about several things. Uh, one of the things he mentioned um, when he talked about, you know, his journey and how he eventually decided to become a coach is that it was something actually that he's always been doing you know he was always um, the person that liked to help other people and uh, also when he was a little boy he was already giving away his stuff to others in order to help and that's probably something that's always been there inside of him and he did express in a way um, but he didn't see that that's one of the things that really fills him up and gives him joy and that he should do more with um, yeah, the nature of his being. Uh, so that's when he eventually, of course, when he eventually decided to become a coach, he could do that uh, yeah, in many more ways also through the book and through the online community that he has. So one of the things um, that um, I suggest you do for yourself is uh, because a lot of times we already do things we enjoy or that um, our talents or skills that we have we just don't recognize those our talents or skills or that it's a big passion of ours so it would be good for yourself if you could get a piece of paper and a pen and write down write down the things that really fill you up that light you up that um, you've always been doing unconsciously but didn't realize that it's actually part of who you are in your core um, a lot of times also when you uh, see interviews of uh, famous people for example uh, some uh, famous presenters here in holland they say you know actually looking back uh, also my parents always noticed that i was always very talkative and I uh, was very curious and I used to ask a lot of questions to strangers to different people so some of um, the talents needed in order to become a presenter or yeah, whatever other um, job um, yeah, wherever your ambition lies some of those things um, might have been there for a long time. You just didn't re recognize it. You just didn't give it the space to become even stronger and to, to grow even more. Um, so it's good to just stop and think about those things. So that's something I would recommend you to do. In the second part of the interview, we're going to be talking about a very important topic called focus. Arvind um, will share some of his advices when it comes to being more focused on your business and some of the things that you can or shouldn't do. We we'll also will be uh, talking about some of the struggles you know that you come across when you build a business and when you become bigger and uh, many other um, interesting stuff so stay tuned also for the second part that will be published in about a week and in the meantime feel free to share this interview visit the website of uh, Arv de Velia um, go to the the fan page um, I'll also put all the links uh, below the video 
and stay well and um, yeah i hope to see you and uh, hear from you very soon yeah in the meantime stay well